After you leave the World Bank, whenever you leave, what would you like to do? Well, I, you know, I've, in, in, um, in trying to look at the evidence for, um, uh, you know, for development, what, what do we need to do? I, I, certain things are very striking to me. One is that um, uh, if by 2025, indeed, everyone in the world, 8 billion people have access to broadband, then the experience that my parents had of coming to the United States and saying, wow, this is what the world could look like, everyone will have that on smartphones. As more people get online, their aspirations grow. So there's absolutely no way we're going to meet the aspirations of all 8 billion people without massive new investments coming from the private sector. And so you know, if I were to do anything after this, I would somehow work on that problem. Okay. Now, did your parents uh, live to see you become the president of the World Bank? Not my father, but, uh, but my mother. Uh, my, my father passed away uh, early uh, when he was 57, but uh, my mother has. And uh, she must be pretty proud to have been proud to see you be president of the World Bank. Yeah, yeah, and and then and soon after, you know, soon after I was named, she learned what the World Bank was. You know, so okay. <laughs> so uh, I don't play golf because uh, I don't think I'd be very good at it. You're obviously a very good golfer. Uh, when did you have time to learn golf? So I grew up in uh, in Iowa, and uh, we lived right near the local golf okay. course, and so I played it competitively all through high school. So you've played with President Obama. Yes. And you've played with President Trump? Yes, I have. Well, who's better? <laughs> uh, gee, uh, so, you know, um, <laughs> let, me, let me just put it this way. So President Obama started late in life, right? And so for someone who started late in life, he's very, very good. President Trump's been playing for most of his life, and uh, he is extremely good. He's an extremely good golfer. He, he can hit all the shots. So it's a, it's a, it's, it's, um, uh, it's, there are two different kinds of golfers completely. Okay. How's that? All right, that's a very <laughs> diplom diplomatic answer. Now, what would you say is the greatest pleasure of your professional life? I, for, for me, I think the, the, the thing that I'm most grateful for is that I have been able to learn new things throughout every stage of, uh, of my professional career. And so as long as you stay open to it, I think that's the key. And if I were to give advice to anyone, I mean, you know, what we now know is that the jobs of the future will require that people are ready to continue to learn throughout their lives. In the old days, the advice was plastics, but now... Plastics, yeah. If you ever want to get into private equity when you leave the World Bank, let me know. <laughs> well, well, you did say that the, that the highest human calling is private equity. It is. I have to tell you that people who are willing to put risk capital into developing countries, right? right? That's the key. That's going to be the key. And unfortunately, there's not enough of it right now. And so, uh, if you know, it, it, making economies work for for everybody, it, you know, this is essentially uh, what I say now uh, to everybody here at the World Bank Group. Our job is to make the global market system work for everybody and the planet. And whether you like it or not, whether you like it or not, it, it really we really have to do that. There's no, there's going to be no way to buffer yourself from two billion people living in Africa by 2050 who are going to have aspirations that are every bit as high as Europeans, as Americans. And, and so we have no choice but to make this system uh, work for everybody. Dr. Kim, thank you very much for what you've done for the World Bank. Thank you, David.